Damn, my hair is my hair is growing back quick. I finished chemotherapy in October. It's now January. So, I mean, it makes sense. It's going to grow back. But still, it's growing back so quickly. I'm going to need a haircut soon. Anyway, what's up, everyone? Ollie here. I love doing these sorts of videos. I love watching these videos, seeing how people shoot their videos, how they set up their studio. It's just, it's just interesting to me. And hopefully, whoever's watching this video also finds it interesting. So when it comes to shooting videos, I like to make sure that I have a setup that's always ready to go. So I'm using a second bedroom in my house just as a sort of YouTube studio to shoot videos very, very quickly and have everything set up ready to go. So the heart of this setup is my Sony a7S III. I absolutely love this camera. I love it so much that I'm considering buying another one. And yeah, I think the image quality, you know, the videos that I've been shooting recently have really gone up a notch ever since using this camera. But like I've said before, when you're first starting YouTube and you're making your own YouTube videos, don't feel pressure to buy a really expensive camera. I think it's always worth just starting off with your phone. So many YouTubers that I know actually just use their phones because phones are so good at recording videos these days. When it comes to the lens that I'm using, I'm using the Sigma 24 millimeter f 1.4. Now the reason I like this lens is because of that low aperture of 1.4. When you have an aperture of 1.4, I'm just looking at myself in my monitor, it really separates me from the background. So I'm sort of shooting at an angle into my room, into this second bedroom. And it gives me that nice depth of field. It keeps me in focus, but everything else behind me is really nice and blurry. Even the table in front of me is blurry as well. I like that. I like having lots of depth of field in my shots. I feel like that's just my sort of style when it comes to shooting videos. For people who are interested in getting the same settings as my Sony a7S III. I'll leave a link to downloading those settings and what you can do is you can just upload them to your SD card and then import them into your camera so you can have exactly the same setup that I do. When it comes to the picture profile that I use, I use picture profile eight, which is S-Log3 and that gives me a really nice flat image that then I can grade. So I'll show you a flat image now and then you can also see the graded image. And yeah, the grade that I use is actually a custom grade that I've fine tuned myself. So I don't actually know how to share this because it's not a lot. It's actually in Final Cut Pro and it's just a bunch of sort of color correction, color grading layers. But after I've color corrected and made sure my footage looks fine, and then I add a LUT on top, which is basically just a filter. It just gives my image a bit more contrast, gives it a bit more of a bluey hue, but also makes the oranges and reds pop a bit more as well. I have the camera lens sitting on a Manfrotto sort of video head, fluid video head. I'll leave links to everything down below because I don't know the exact model numbers, but yeah, fluid head, and then I have it also on a Manfrotto tripod. This works great. The fluid head that I've got also gives me really nice panning movements whenever I wanna shoot sort of B-roll and stuff. See, so yeah, I love this video head, and I actually think it's fairly affordable compared to some of the other tripod setups that I've seen that are like thousands of dollars, which makes sense. You know, those sorts of tripod setups really are specific and are really fantastic quality, but I didn't have the budget and it's not worth me spending that sort of money on a tripod yet anyway. So I've gone with quite a budget option. Well, I say budget, it's still like $400 when it comes to the video head and the tripod together, but to get the nice panning motions, to get the fluid motions and stuff, you do sort of have to spend that sort of money. When it comes to the microphone, it probably doesn't do this setup justice considering I have such an expensive camera. Yeah, I'm using a microphone that's like 50, $60. I do actually plan to upgrade it at some point, but it's been doing the job for me, to be honest. It just connects directly into the camera. So I have audio going straight into the camera because I don't really want to bother syncing audio after post by recording the audio separately. I can completely understand why other people do it because you do get better quality audio by doing that, especially if you have an XLR mic, usually because cameras don't have very good recorded, like audio recording capabilities. Their preamps, they call them, aren't very good. So yeah, I'm, I'm not too fussed about having the super cleanest audio. So this one does the job right now. I have the microphone sitting on a boom arm, which is actually just attached to an Ikea leg, desk leg. <laughs> That's the best thing I could find. This is very much sort of makeshift setup, you could say. And it works because I'm just reusing stuff that I wasn't using anyway. Now I don't have the mic attached to my table. And the reason I don't have it attached to the table is because if I, if I tap the table, it ends up reverberating throughout the boom arm and then into the mic. So that's why I have the mic separate on its own sort of legs 
away from the table so that when I knock the table, when I touch the table and stuff, it doesn't reverberate into the mic. I have the camera connected via HDMI to a monitor that I just had laying around, a spare monitor that I wasn't using and I just thought, hey, why don't I just connect my camera up to it? And it works, it does a really good job. I can see myself, I can make sure my shot is in frame. I can also make sure that I'm in focus. And because it's a 24 inch monitor, it definitely makes it really easy to make sure that I'm in focus. I also still use the monitor that comes with the A7S III, the flip out screen, because on that I have the information showing, you know, if it's recording, how long I've been recording for, making sure that the exposure settings, everything is all correct. When it comes to the monitor, I actually just have it sitting on the box that the monitor came in. So you can see again, I'm just reusing what I have sitting around. I haven't bothered getting a proper monitor stand. I do need to get one to be honest, but this just works. It works fine for me right now. When it comes to me actually sitting within the frame, I like to have a table in front of me, especially because I do a lot of product reviews and I cover products and things like that. So having a table in front of me, having the product in front of me really helps. And I'm actually considering getting an overhead camera. So that's why I'm also considering buying another Sony A7S III so that I can have an overhead shot shooting the product that I'm talking about. And yeah, this table is just from John Lewis. It's a really nice walnut table, really nicely finished. I mean, I say it's nicely finished. I feel like it's all scratched up and marked up already, but hey, you know, you can't keep it completely clean and brand new forever. On the table, I have my iPad Pro with my Magic Keyboard. And the reason I had this is because I actually write all of my notes for my videos and sort of bullet points and things like that within Notion and then have that in front of me. And with the Magic Keyboard, you know, I can quickly research something if I need to. Say I need to get a, a spec sheet up or something like that, or say there's something that I just completely forgot about. I can just Google it really quickly. And yeah, it's just a nice way to have all of my notes in front of me. I also have a microfiber cloth. Everyone needs a microfiber cloth, especially when you're recording product videos. Make sure those screens are clean. And I like to make sure obviously my desk is clean. I also have a little remote that I got from Amazon and that just helps me hit the record button for recording videos. Helps me adjust a few settings like ISO and things like that. This was only around 10, $15 and it's really useful because I don't have to keep reaching over to the camera, which is actually quite far away. I can just use this to hit the record button or adjust any settings very quickly. I like to sit on a stool when I do my videos and this stool is from Ikea. It's completely black and has a nice industrial look to it. I actually really like it. And even though it looks quite uncomfortable, it's actually more comfortable than I thought it would be. And yeah, I'm not sitting here for hours anyway. I'm usually sitting here for maximum half an hour, maybe an hour recording a video. It works really well within my studio space because it's so light and so small. I can just move it around without having a big bulky chair that I I might have to move out of the way when I'm shooting stuff. The light that I'm using that I have just up here is a Falcon Eyes 12T. And yeah, it's a pretty affordable light. It's not as good as like the Aperture lights and the Godox lights that you might see come up a lot on other YouTube setups. But for me, it works because it's such a compact light. It's such a low profile sort of light as well. And then I have a layer of diffusion within it, which actually comes with the light. And then I also have a grid on top. And the grid actually helps with directing the light making sure that I'm basically the focus of the shot, making sure that I'm just lit up and my background isn't lit up. And yeah, this light, it does the job. It's bright enough. Would I recommend it? I think if you're looking for a budget, low profile light, yeah, sure. But I'm already considering upgrading it to an Aperture light or a Godox light, mainly because they're more powerful and usually they come with a remote so you can do a lot more sort of finer adjustments. Because with this one, you just get a dial, which just changes the intensity and an on off switch and it just connects via the mains. It's a very basic light, but it does the job. When it comes to accent lights, I actually have a light, which I don't know if you can see, but it's reflecting off my head here. I have a light that's sitting just up here on top of my shelf. And that's a very small Falcon Eyes light. I think it's the Falcon Eyes F7. And yeah, just a small LED sort of panel light that I use to have the light sort of bounce off the back and side of my head, just separates me more from the background. And the light that I have here is a LifeX beam light. And this is an RGB light that I can change colors and whatever, but I actually just have it on sort of like a very cool white bluey color and it works. It adds a bit of accent lighting to my shot. When it comes to the shelving unit, I get a lot of questions about it. It's from Wayfair and it's not a very good quality shelving unit to be honest, because this wood isn't even wood. It's like fake something. I don't even know what it is. It looks quite good when you see it on camera, but in real life, when you actually look at it, you realize it's not real wood at all. It's not even like a veneer. It's just like, it's just like 3D print. It's, it's quite terrible actually, but I like it. I feel like it does the job. It gives my shot a bit of depth and I also use it a lot for B-roll. So I'll put products along the shelf and stuff. I'll record the product on the shelf. 
And yeah, it's just quite useful. I have just a bunch of accessories laying around on it. And at the bottom, I just have my cables and my chargers as well for charging batteries and powering the light and powering other various different things. It's not the neatest. The cable management is quite awful, but hey, you don't see it in the shot, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> in the corner against the wall, I also have some black and white backdrops. And I like to use these again for B-roll shots, for product shots and stuff. I put them on the table and it's just a good way to have like a black backdrop or a white backdrop. And I'll put the light over the top and yeah, you get some nice clean shots with them. You can usually pick these up for a few dollars from arts and crafts shops and things like that. And yeah, because they're so cheap, you know, if you do end up destroying one or, or marking one up, you can just go out and buy another one. In this corner over here, I have a fake Ikea tree, which I bought. It just adds a nice bit of color, nice bit of green to the shot because before I felt like it was just way too gray and white and black and I feel like adding the green adds a bit more life to the shot. Over here, I have an Ikea trolley, which is on wheels. And this is just useful to have all of my photo gear, video gear, all in a trolley, which I can move around whenever I need to. And yeah, I have like lenses and cables and other random accessories in there. When it comes to shooting your own videos and framing your shots, I highly recommend creating as much depth as possible. And I feel like a really good way to do that is to shoot at an angle or shoot into a corner of a room. If you shoot flat against a wall, which you can, a lot of people do, it doesn't create as much depth and it can make everything look a bit flat too. I think for most people, shooting at an angle, shooting into a corner of a room really creates a lot more depth. Add some things in the background like I have. I have some Ikea frames with some prints in them. I'll leave a link to them as well if you guys are interested. And yeah, I have a shelving unit. I have accessories on the shelving unit. I have the fake plant in the background. And all of this stuff, when it works together, just really creates a nice depth to your shots. So that's it for my YouTube studio sort of tour. And it's funny because I'm actually looking for an office or a warehouse or a unit or something like that so that I can have a dedicated YouTube space mainly because I don't want to be using my second bedroom as a YouTube space because it is quite small. You can barely get a double bed in here. You couldn't get a king size bed or a queen size bed in here at all. So it's quite a small space, but I've tried to make the most of it. I've tried to make the most of having a, a setup that I can easily go to and start recording without having to mess around with stuff. Leave a comment below of what is your favorite part of this setup and whichever I think is the best comment, maybe the most funniest or maybe the most interesting or whatever else it may be, I don't know, I don't know, just something, just some random comment, whatever is my favorite one, I'll send you $50. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe for more.